Welcome back to the Fluval Ultimate Guide for the Aqua Sky 2. And in this episode, we are going to talk about what is probably going to be your best friend, Auto Mode. Hello everyone, this is Bentley, and today we're back here. We're actually on the tank where I have the Aqua Sky hooked up and has been running as my primary test tank. Now, note that this tank has a little bit of CO2. Uh, I also did some testing on my Leopolda Angel tank, which is currently not running CO2. It did in the past, but has not been for you know, six-ish months or so, and that includes a period of time while I tested this light. But we're not going to get into the review side of this. We're going to get into why auto mode is probably your best friend. And for this light, you might not even need pro mode. It's that good. So let's talk about uh, a few of the things you need to know. And then where uh, the, the settings I have as a suggestion for you are going to play their most effective part. So first things first, you're going to have to have the Flu Ball Smart app. We talked about that before, but once you get into the app, you're going to select your light. And you see here... Similar to my phone, here's my Aqua Sky on a, a kind of a weird auto setting specifically for filming. And down in the bottom corner, uh, you're going to see Export, Save As, Preview, and Dynamic Effect Disabled. Now, Dynamic Effect allows you to add some of the weather effects. So previously, we talked about how there's like storm effects and stuff like that. You can add that on top of your light settings. Personally, I avoid these, but there are some really small niche reasons why you might use these kind of light settings. Again, I avoid them. Now, save as, export, preview. These are all super, super helpful. But before we talk about those, let's talk about each of the different settings that we have right here. And we'll have a screenshot come out just to help. But you have sunrise, daylight, sunset, night, and sleep. So very similar to what we've seen in the plant light. Your sunrise is your ramp up period from whatever your sleep or your night mode is, depending on how you program it, to slowly escalating until you get to whatever the full value is for your daylight. Your daylight is the period of time where you're at your maximum power, so to speak. And then your sunset is ramped down. Night, if you choose to use it, allows you to have a window of time or potentially the entire rest of the time your light is on where you have a very light amount of light and you can use just blue light. You can use a small amount of white. However you want to, if you're looking to have some kind of moonlight effect, this is where you would do it. Sleep, finally, is where everything is turned off. There's nothing going until you hit the next start of sunrise. Let's talk about preview, export, and of course, save as. So first off, let's talk about preview. Let's let's use the tank behind me as an example. Let's say we're going to preview the particular auto mode settings I have. Now, a reminder, this is a really weird setting, but right now we're in our sleep portion of the mode. We're getting close to sunrise. I'm just going to watch it here and track it. So we're going to start our sunrise in just a moment here, and you will see the light slowly ramp up. There's our sunrise until we've hit our daylight, which is our maximum light setting. And keep in mind, the, the Aqua Sky is a less powerful light, so you're not going to see super bright light unless you're on a fairly shallow tank with this light. You can use that to your advantage, though. We'll talk about that in just a sec. So we go through our daylight. This one's really long in particular on mine. Yeah, we're, we're doing this live. No crazy edits. <laughs> That's just how we roll here. And then eventually we're going to get to our sunrise. You're going to... or <laughs> sunset. You're going to see that light ramp back down. In this particular setting, I don't have a night mode, but if you had a night mode once the sunset completes, your night mode would take over, whatever that light setting is, and then you go into sleep if you program it. So once the preview completes, you go back to your normal light setting. Here we are. Now, for the other two settings, you have save as and export. Let's say that you want to do multiple settings, or you just want one really good setting, and you want to make sure that should anything ever go wrong, or you tinker with something, you don't lose it. That's where Save As comes in handy. You just click Save As, you'll get Save Profile Name, you save its name, boom, that setting is saved into your phone. We save this particular setting as Ultimate Guide. Then, when you go to Export, you will see a number of available settings. In our case, we have one that says Ultimate Guide. So we could export that to our light by hitting Export, or you could remove it if you no longer need that setting. Once you hit Export, it's going to apply those settings to your light. So if you end up getting multiple lights and you want to have the same setting across that light, maybe you're getting multiple 40 breeders, you want them all exactly the same. You save as the settings from your first light because you've had great success with it. Some crazy YouTuber taught you this thing and it's amazing. 
Then you walk over to the next light, you connect to the next light, and you export, and now you can bring those settings from your previous light to your new light. Easy peasy, great solution on how to make sure that you can go from one light to the other, no problem. Once we have that, let's talk about where auto really matters. Auto is fantastic if you're more of a beginner and you don't want to go too crazy with pro mode. This is kind of a way to let the app do almost all the work for you. You just tell it how long you want your sunrise to be, how long you want your sunset to be, when those are going to start and end, and in between them is your daylight. You tell it how much power you want to give to the light during daylight, it does all the work for you. It evenly ramps the light up, walks through your daylight, evenly ramps the light down. If you have a nighttime mode set, let's say you do like 1% white and 3% blue or something like that, it shifts into that until you go into your sleep where it will turn the light off. You can on the sleep screen disable sleep so that you always have light at all times. I personally don't use this nor suggest it. However, just because I don't do it doesn't mean that it can't be effective and successful for you. That's all about how you want to keep your tank. And as you play with it and learn the light, keep in mind, most of these settings, while I've had lots of success with them, they're kind of like guidelines. Every tank is different. So you might need to have just a little more of white light or just a little less red, whatever it may be. These are kind of like a baseline. From there, if you see little ways that you need to make some adjustments, make those adjustments, tinker, play. Auto mode is great for that because you can do it very, very quickly. You can easily change the settings on your light, have it saved inside of a couple of minutes, or set up a brand new light using auto mode in five minutes or less. It's easy. And that's why I really, really suggest auto mode to a multitude of people because it's the easiest way to get started. Get used to the functions, understand how the light works. Then and only then, once you have a good feel for how that light works in your tank, would you look at pro mode. And honestly, in this particular light, I would almost just stick to auto mode the entire time. Pro mode is awesome. Do not get me wrong. And you can do some really cool stuff with it, but I've had phenomenal success using my auto settings. And I honestly don't see a reason to go away from them. So with that being said, let's talk some settings. Our first setting is going to be my aqua sky setting for auto mode. If you're going for something like my 40 breeder here, the key about this particular setting is that you want to have more lower light or medium light plants. You are not going to do high light with this thing. And you can even see behind me as I've changed that setting, it's not super bright. The thing is plants like Java Fern, Crypt, Anubius, they do fantastic in this lower amount of light. It actually causes them to think they're in a shaded environment and basically increases their propagation and their health. You guys have seen the amazing Crypt carpet that is in this tank in the past. It's all because of this setting. This setting had my crypts go crazy during the summer and flowering everywhere. It was incredible. I know, I know. Bentley, shut up and tell us the setting. Here you go. So first things first, for our daylight, white 100%, blue 20%. I know normally I keep blue really low, but the way this light is designed, 20% blue is very, very little. Our green is 90%. And I know that sounds really high, but trust me, Green light is actually really, really effective in the aquarium in combination with our red light, which we're going to set to 75%. The goal here is to kind of have a little bit of a shaded summer day with this type of program. Our sunrise and sunset are both two hours long, and then we have about eight hours of daylight. And I know this seems really long, but for a lot of those low and medium light plants, especially your crypts and your java fern, they actually do phenomenal with longer periods of light at less intensity. And that's what we're trying to create with this particular setting right here. This is really good if you're doing a lot of those low, easy, maintainable plants in a 29 gallon, a 20 gallon, a 40 breeder, or similar size tanks. Once you get over about 16 inches tall, I would not look at this at like something say like a 55 gallon or uh, your, your 125s. But once you get any taller than that, you're kind of probably going to need a little bit more power just because of the diffraction, unless you have basically only like Crips, Anubius, and Java for it. And then even then you'll probably be okay. You might just increase your red just a little bit, but you probably don't need to right away. Now, if you're using a more shallow tank, something like say a 20 long or a 10 gallon, 
uh, 30 breeders, these kind of tanks where they're only somewhere between 12 and 14 inches tall, not quite as tall. Maybe you have a really thick substrate layer. So the distance from the bottom of the light to the top of the substrate is actually not all that far. We're going to go with this version of the setting. So again, just like our previous setting, two hour long sunrise, two hour long sunset, the same amount of daytime. I'm doing no night, but you can add a little night if you want to. If you do night, keep it extremely low. We're talking like whites at one or two percent, blues at no more than three percent. Extremely low. I personally don't like the night setting, but that's your personal choice. You can add it if you'd like to. And then for our daylight, we're doing 50 percent red, 60 percent green, 70 percent white and 10 percent blue. So this is in our shallower tank. We don't have quite as much distance that we're traveling. We're going to dial that light back just a little bit and you can even see it on behind me. It's even dimmer, but not quite too much. This is just enough pullback to make sure that our low demand plants aren't getting really bombarded with too much light and then causing things like algae on the top of your leaves, uh, blackbeard algae, those kind of things. The goal here is to give them just enough for a nice long period during the day, kind of like being in summer in the shade. That causes a lot of these plants to just go absolutely gangbusters. Now, if you happen to have a shallow tank and you have higher demand plants, this is where you can actually go to the previous setting, that 40 breeder setting. Uh, so maybe you have some more aggressive stems, Alternanthera rhinecii, some kind of these plants. Nothing too crazy. This is not going to be something that grows your super highlight plants unless you use multiple lights. So keep that in mind. Finally, if you have a really tall tank, but you want to use, um, again, more easy plants, that's really what this light is great at. This light is amazing for low light and medium light plants. If you're going to do high light, start looking at the plants or a different, more powerful light, just because this does not have enough power to really be effective. And you're going to struggle really hard to keep those plants happy and healthy. Now, if we're talking a taller tank, maybe it's something like my Guppy Mansion where it's 24 inches tall, but all your plants are pretty low demand. Then we can look at this setting here. All right, this is my Aqua Sky Tall. Again, same sunrise, same sunset. You're gonna notice a pattern here. This is super effective and I've had great success with it. But the difference is we're gonna up all that light just a little bit. So the blue we're gonna keep at 20%. Whites, we go back to that full 100% power, all the white we can get. And then 95% in both red and green. And you can see it a little bit on the tank behind me. It has a little yellowish cast to it. Don't worry too much about that. That can be really, really good for a lot of your plants. And really, they don't care about that. That's only how our eyes perceive it. But more importantly, this is just enough light for those taller tanks to give it a little bit of oomph. And maybe you might need two lights to do this effectively on some tanks. But then your low, easy peasy plants like your Crips, your Nubius, again, you're going to notice there's a big pattern here. Low and the lower end of medium demand plants. This is amazing for those kind of plants. This is not something that you're going to use with Monte Carlo, Dwarf Baby Tears, any of your super fine leaf plants, especially your carpeting plants. This light is not going to give you enough light at the substrate to really be effective with those plants unless you <laughs> get like three of them. I mean, seriously, you would need a lot. You'd need them all just cranking all the way and you'd need quite a lot of CO2. This is amazing for doing your small crypts, Java Fern, all that kind of stuff. If you want an easy to maintain aquascape tank or even just a, a generically planted tank like mine, this light's pretty amazing on all those low demand plants. So with that being said, those are all my auto settings. Now, if you are doing a brand new tank, let's say you're going to use one of my auto settings, you would do them in stages. You might not go full light right away. So an example here we talked about this before where you would stage those lights up in the previous video. Do something similar. So if you're doing that really tall tank, start at something where it's like 60% of what your target is and wait for those plants to just settle in a little bit so that we don't have too much algae right away. And then start cranking your light up week after week, just making sure that we don't see a big algae bloom. With this light, it's pretty unlikely because it's not super powerful, but still you wanna be cautious, take your time, be patient, you will get the most effect doing it that way. That's it, guys. That is your ultimate guide to auto mode on the Fluval Aquasky 2. What I want to know from you guys in the comments below, did you learn something? Do you like, like something I talked about? Are you sitting there going like, I'm building a crypt tank, a java fern, and I'm using that light, and I'm using that setting. Or maybe you're like, Bentley, you dummy, this is the perfect setting. 
let me know in the comments down below. I love hearing from you guys when it comes to this kind of stuff. If you enjoyed this video, please, 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 for the, the grand YouTube algorithm it is ever, ever hungering, give it a little like, maybe share it. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing, ring the notification bell, all the usual YouTube stuff that we poor souls are a slave to. <laughs> ah, but seriously, uh, if you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments down below. I love hearing from you guys. Look out next week. We're going all the way. We're going to pro mode. And uh, I got a little extra trick for you. Just in case auto mode wasn't enough. I got a little extra trick in the pro mode video. Just for you. As always guys. Thank you so much for watching. And stay awesome.